Hey guys, so I'm not sure what happened there. I somehow lost Sarah. So we're back anyway. So we're back and let me just wait to see if I can get a few more people uh, connecting because I'm not sure what happened then, guys. Hey ho, lovely to see you. Hey Ems, I really don't know what happened then, guys. I somehow, hey Rich, thank you so much for joining us, guys. I don't know what went on there. Sarah's here, hey. <laughs> let's try and bring this back up. So, okay. And let's see what's going on. And hopefully we can get Sarah back. So let me see. Hello. Hi. Hi. And so what happened there? What happened then? I have no idea, Sarah. So just really quickly, guys, this is real relevant and right now. I'm Kirsty Spence. And we did just have a few technical difficulties. So I'm just going to kind of recap what we've already spoken about. So on today's um, show, we've got Sarah Harvey. Hey, Sarah. <laughs> and Sarah is basically going to be speaking to us about effectively living with an invisible disease, which is Crohn's disease. Um, so, Sarah, just really quickly for the guys that are joining and for the, everybody at home that's watching, you know, what is Crohn's disease? Okay, so Crohn's disease is a um, inflammatory bowel disease. So it can affect anywhere from your mouth to your anus. Um, the side effects can be ulcers, in inflammation, fatigue, diarrhea, sickness. There are so many things that can come with it. I could literally be here all day if I live all day. Yeah. No, of course. And so let's get into your story, basically, Sarah. So when were you first diagnosed with Crohn's disease? Um, so I think I it was about seven years ago. So I think it was 2013 that I eventually got diagnosed. Yeah. And just leading up to the diagnosis, I can imagine it was probably you didn't have a clue what the hell was going on, right? Because I'm guessing that there was probably inflammation. I bet, you know, it's probably mistaken for IBS or maybe a food allergy. Like, tell us a little bit about kind of just leading up to, you know, the diagnosis that you, right, okay, this is what you've got, Sarah. What, yeah. How was life for you living? Like, eating, enjoying life? So I remember being able to eat everything, um, but I probably for about 10 years, I actually suffered with like extreme tiredness, diarrhea. Um, I think I had about two or three different flare ups um, and, you know, went to the doctors, did a couple of hospital visits, got told, you know, IBS, gastroenteritis, a water infection, the flu, like so many different things. things because nobody can actually see what's going on inside of your body. So yes. it's just, yeah, like people just don't understand. And a lot of doctors actually don't believe the illness. They don't really? believe Crohn's colitis. They even don't even believe IBS. So because they just can't see what's going inside unless they get an actual camera and put it inside. Yeah, no, of course. And I know that like the exact cause of Crohn's disease effectively right now in this current day and age, we still don't know what it is. I know that, you know, research did say kind of back in, I think like 2017, that they thought it could have been diet related or it could have been stress, but that now doesn't seem to be the case. So for, for you as a person, that must be so difficult, you know, being in so much pain and constantly like going back and then being sent home, going back and being sent home. Like, how was that for you kind of how did that affect you mentally? Because that must be hard. And, you know, you spoke that you had um, a couple inflammations. Just let everybody know kind of what is an inflammation, what that is for you. So when basically your bowels or say like your intestines are like this, so they go like this, they actually go smaller because they're so inflamed. And that's when you can get blockages. And okay. that is what a lot of people suffer with with Crohn's. Um, like, yeah, blockages, perforation, you know, some... It, I, I don't, I'm not saying it's going to kill you, but there are things out there that can, um, I've totally lost what I'm going to say. No, <laughs> that, right, can, no yeah, worries. that can, uh, it, you know, it just, it's just not a pleasant disease whatsoever, but nobody, no, nobody really understands. I you know, understand. you can say, oh, you know, oh, I get how you're feeling, but unless you've actually really been through it yourself, you don't. Yeah, which is tough. Because like you say, it's nothing on the exterior. It's yeah. not like anyone can see that you've got Crohn's disease. So I can imagine when you're telling someone you're in pain, you know, it's really kind of hard for you to translate to that person the kind of pain you're experiencing, Yeah, you know? And I can only imagine, like, that must be so frustrating because you know how we are as human beings. Everyone's kind of like, oh, Sarah, suck it up. Do you know what I mean? You're yeah. not right. And I'm, I'm sure you've had some of those passing comments. I mean, like, mm -hmm. how has that made you feel? Because I can only imagine that's really tough, you know? When you are in a lot of pain and no one can physically see, like, a wound or, you know, how has that been for you? 
I mean, I'm not really one to like exaggerate. I'm more likely to exaggerate with a cold than I am my stomach. Like, I don't like to let people know that I'm in pain. Like, yes. I know, <clears throat> for example, the other day when I was in the kitchen and you come in and you were like, are you okay? And I was like sweating with pain. I was like, no, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. And then eventually was like, well, actually, I've had a lot of pain today. And then it kind of passed, yeah. so that was okay. But it's like, obviously, the long-term pain, like if you are in what they call a flare, and you could be in pain for like a day up to like six months really just constant pain and i'm so so lucky that i don't have that anymore okay so but you I did have that do. yeah so I did tell us a little that. bit about like when did you know it was time for you to go see a doctor was it like like well i know you've previously spoken about you know you were going back and forth back and forth but was there a, t a point like before you got the diagnosis that it was kind of like almost an explosion you know like I need someone to help me now because this is unbearable this pain is unbearable I don't know what the hell is going on with my body like did you experience something like that yeah so that was actually like the day of my diagnosis I was on the way home from work mm -hmm. and I was just sat on the tube and I remember being at like Marl End or somewhere it was so so close to home and I literally just had this pain inside of me and I was like oh my god like I need to go and have help like this is just not this is just not real like what is happening right here and I was actually started crying in the tube that to put my sunglasses down and I started walking home I got off the tube and I rang my mum and she was like you need to call your auntie who lives in London um and she needs to take you to the hospital right now because I was just in so so much pain and it was yeah. actually that day that I got diagnosed but before then I was never in that much pain to the point where I was like I have to go to the hospital and I have to have answers right now yeah, no, I understand. And when you kind of got to the hospital, like explain to us, because somebody, uh, Sandy's written over here, people have died from having Crohn's. So, you know, I, I, I'm assuming like with, again, any illness, it could be really severe. And I suppose it could be quite mild to, depending on who you are and what you eat. And I, I don't know about how you live and stuff like. So when you went to hospital, like what happened? So, I mean, obviously because I was in so much pain, I don't really remember all of it, but I remember being in the waiting room and again, they were like, oh, you're probably gonna have like a two hour wait. And mm. I was just like, okay. And then I was just crying and I was screaming out in pain. I, I, I almost looked like a pregnant lady, like being in labor. That's so that's how, how much, much your stomach had bloated. Yeah, I was, wow. it was just, it was, I was honestly, it was just, it was just awful. And I was so bloated. And then I threw up in A&E. Um, and then they were like, okay, you need to be seen now so eventually they they took me through to the uh, majors bit and I mm -hmm. saw a doctor and he just diagnosed me there and then he was like this is what you have so he knew straight away boom you've got Crohn's yeah. disease yeah and do you remember his name no <laughs> no because I was no but you know like I can just imagine that you know in that moment to finally get an answer even yeah. though you were in so much pain I bet you felt an overwhelming relief yeah you know but... that it's not me going crazy mm. it's not me making this shit up that there's something wrong with me and finally somebody understands exactly but i mean at the time i didn't even know what crohn's disease was i'd never heard of it in my whole entire life and i was like mm, okay and then of course we were like trying to touch base with my family to tell them what was going on and they were like you know gonna have to stay overnight and <clears throat> it just i just didn't know what was going on and like yeah. didn't really know like the, the three months after that was just going to be from absolute hell like it was just horrible yeah no of course and Kieran's asked Annie have you got past it now so have you overcome Crohn's is there a cure to Crohn's disease I wish there was a cure for Crohn's disease me and my family always say that you know if they came out for a cure and said look we want 50,000 pounds we would raise it there and then like especially for anybody else that suffers I'm quite lucky now because I don't suffer in pain as much anymore but I obviously have different symptoms as well um which aren't obviously pleasant i mean having a bowel disease is not the most pleasant thing and it can be of quite course. embarrassing but i've overcome yeah. it now you know like I, I feel comfortable talking about it to my friends and my family <clears throat> and you know if i have to run to go to the toilet i'm like see ya yeah and you know i love that about you sarah because it is you know it isn't something easily it's not something that is comfortable talking about and you know like you know, us as women, you know, it's kind of those kind of things you don't really want to talk about. Like, shit, I've really got to go to the toilet right now. Yeah. And, you know, since the first day I met you, I love how I personally felt that you let me know what was going on, but you never allowed Crohn's disease to define you. So it's like you let me know what it was. You let me know you live with this. 
every single day of your life but also you get on with your life and you are one of the most positive people that I have do you know what I mean in my life and I yeah. just really really respect you and admire you for that because you know when we talk about Crohn's disease it has got a lot to do with your diet am I right so yeah I mean I say if you what if you were to eat something that didn't agree with you that's going to cause you issues yeah no of course I mean, so trust me like I know after a cheeky McDonald's <laughs> I'm sure there's gonna be hell to pay yeah but sometimes <laughs> like it's worth it you know but there are some foods i cannot touch I'll, really I'll so are there some foods before. so are there some foods that like you were used to eating that you've completely had to cut out of your life yeah so i just don't even know how i like how i've overcome it but bacon so I actually can't eat pork at all, um, apart from Richmond sausages, which are really weird, <laughs> um, <laughs> which I love. Um, but yeah, bacon is what I miss because, you know, like at the end of a long day, like, oh my God, I really fancy a bacon and egg sandwich. I can't actually have egg either. Um, so I really, really miss a bacon and egg sandwich. And I really, really miss strawberries and melon. Like really? I can't eat any fruits. I can't eat any salads, like very limited to vegetables. It's hard, especially when yeah. I'm trying to diet and lose weight. But yeah, what of can you course. Do? So yeah, and you know what? That is tough because I know, like, I'm somebody that does not. Um, I definitely don't eat to live. I live to eat. I love yeah. food. <laughs> <I'm the same. laughs> do you know what I mean? So yeah. you know, for me to wake up one day and all of a sudden, for my whole world effectively to be tipped upside down, and you know, to be told like I can eat this and I can't eat that, and you know, that is a really difficult thing to live with, you know, especially when it's not out of choice. Like, it's something you exactly. have to do because of the way your body is reacting to these foods and stuff. Like, yeah. did you ever... Naturally, this is obviously going to have some sort of impact on your mental, you know. Yeah. There must have been days where you felt so low, where you kind of... Did you ever feel like, fuck it, I'm just going to eat this? Like, I, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean... <sighs> Things that I definitely can't eat, I, I never would because, you know, I've, I've passed out with pain or I've passed out on the toilet before from going too much or things like that. So for me, really? it's just not worth it. Like, it's not worth being in a flare for such a long time. There are things that obviously I can eat, like takeaways and stuff that obviously I'll pay for the next day drinking, I'll pay for the next day. But for me, it's com completely worth it because why am I going to, you know, I'm an outgoing person. Why am I going to stay on the sofa every Saturday night? That's just not me whatsoever. Anyone that knows me knows I like to have a drink and knows I like to have a <laughs> She loves her wine. <laughs> I wasn't allowed any before tonight, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good, Sit. And also, like, I was going to ask you then... Um... It's completely popped out of my head. Ah, no, with the food, sorry, and just, you know, being able to decide whether... Or knowing what you can eat, what you can't eat. I... Yeah. That must have been really difficult because I'm sure there's not a list that said, right, it's Sarah, not. you now can't eat this and you can't eat this. Like, was that difficult to implement into your life? Because you literally would be trial and error, no? It is because, I mean, I luckily have a very, very dear friend who I believe is watching today um, who also has Crohn's disease and she can't actually, she can eat what I can't eat, vice versa. So everybody is completely different. Um, you know, some people can just eat salads and stuff, but I know... If things like that are really hard to digest, a lot of people do suffer with. But yeah, it, again, it's just trial and error. Everybody's different. There is no strict list you have to follow. Everybody's just so different. Yeah, no, of course. And, you know, since you were diagnosed with Crohn's disease, like, how has that impacted your life? Have you let it impact your life in any way? Or, you know? Yeah, I mean, at the beginning, may maybe. It took me a good couple of years to accept um the Crohn's disease and I obviously went for a big operation as well so that took a massive a massive part of my life and then I thought well actually no I'm not really going to let it define who I am some people who know me don't know that I have it some people do it's just whether I choose to tell you or not um I mean don't get me wrong there are some times that you know like if I'm on holiday or you know if I'm out with people and I've got a dodgy tummy or something I'll be like why me like what did I do to deserve this and I still think that's the day but yeah. I mean, I'm, fuck it, I'm not going to let it ruin, ruin who I am. Because you're a tough cookie. Kill, it makes you stronger. Love that, 100%. No, and I think that that's it, you know, it's as much as you are very positive and outgoing and you're a strong woman, Sarah, you're also human. So, you know, naturally you're going to have those down days and it is tough, do you know what I mean? And it is, 
like you say, you've had to work hard to accept it. Yeah. Yet in the same token, it can still be inconvenient. It can still, you know, not be yes. a great thing in life for you to live with every day. And I just think, you know, it's a credit to you because of the person that you are. You've not really let this stop you from doing the things that you love or the things that make you happy in life, which is really, really important. Yeah, absolutely. You know? No, definitely. And <laughs> one just question you there, you said you had a massive operation, which obviously I know about, but like, let the guys know, because this is not only just, you know, something to do with your diet. And like you say, you know, you have issues and you may need to go to the toilet in like situations where it's really uncomfortable, but you also had a massive operation. Tell I us like, what happened. Yeah. Um, so we after my diagnosis, um, I was in hospital the first time for I think about two weeks. Then I went home. I went back to work for three days and woke up in pain again. Um, yes. So then they popped me through again to A and E. Went back into hospital for about three weeks. Um, and this particular doctor was like, "Actually, you can go home today." And for anyone that doesn't know, I have a IBD nurse, which is a nurse um to like sort of support you and, and have any problems and he was like no like i really want and you to just stay. go back sorry to interrupt you but yeah. ibd is inflammatory bowel disease right that's Anyone right no so that's yeah. your ibd now so i'm guessing they'll deal with crohn's colitis, like colitis. any kind of disease is going on with the bowels right yeah okay, exactly sure. um so then he was just like no i want you to stay so i was like okay i'll stay a couple of more days which I really, really just didn't want to. Um, and then I woke up the next day in the most excruciating pain. I was just like, I can't deal with this, it's too much. And that particular day they were like, okay, we're gonna give you a small operation on the Monday because it was, I think it was a Friday. Um, you know, we'll, we'll manage it with pain over the week, pain meds over the weekend, she'll be fine, blah, blah, blah. Went for a nap, woke up into this pain that I've never ever experienced in my whole entire life. Like this nurse had to take me to the toilet and I had like a tube up my nose. I pulled the, I pulled the tube um, out. I pulled my cannula out. I just stripped naked because I was just sweating, like dripping. Um, and I had a couple of doctors that particular night and was like, you know, it's fine. She's going to have to wait till Monday. Like there are obviously no doctors um, that can see her. And then it was really weird because um, my mum and mum, like my mum kept pushing and pushing. We, I think we have three doctors and she kept pushing. And the particular guy that came back uh, to see me was actually the guy in A&E that diagnosed me. Wow. So I was like, wow. And I <laughs> bet that was even a, a relief. No, well, I mean, at the time, I was, that... I was so out of my face of warfare, and I just no. didn't know what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, that was, that was lovely. And he was, he was like, she needs an operation now. Whether it can be now or wait till the morning, we'll yeah. have to see. So they sent me for a scan. And then um, I came back, and he had said to my mum, oh, your bowel has perforated. And she just started wow. crying. And I didn't actually know what that was. Like, and I was just looking at my mum, like, why why are you crying why are you crying and he was like right we take um because they basically that particular day they'd um starve me of food and water so mm -hmm. i was so dehydrated that i had to um they had to basically flush me in like all this water um and they had to put like more cannulas in me and i was just like oh my god this is too much and then i went for a big wow. operation and i think it was seven hours um and they removed half of which is really serious sir uh... Yeah. Really serious. So sorry, I interrupted you then. They removed half of your... They removed half of uh, my intestines. Wow. So that was all scarred. So that was obviously causing me a lot of issues as well. And they, they told me that I was going to wake up with a bag, and I didn't. But I woke up what, in a bag, in like a colostomy bag. Yeah, sorry, so colostomy bag. But um, like for anyone that's, not, that's listening that doesn't know, that's where you effectively no longer can go to the toilet yeah, it's to the as, side. Normal, as you would normally. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. So, of course, like, a 23-year-old girl, I'm just like, oh, my God, like, I don't Jeez want Louise. I just don't want a bag. Like, I know there's nothing wrong with it, but obviously I'm very, you know, very young. I don't really know yeah, what's going on. My life's changed. And then, yeah, I woke up um, a day later, <clears throat> and it's really weird because I remember saying to you the other day, there's a film out there called Breakthrough. Um, for anyone that hasn't seen it, it's about a guy that falls in the water, he's un unconscious, he dies, and then he wakes up to the sound of his mum's voice. And I always say, and I've always said that I woke up to my to my mum's voice, my mum and my sister were there. And I was like, get the tubes off of me now, get them off of me. And then I spent really? uh, two, two or three days in ICU. And then so when you say you voice. could hear your mum's voice, were you unconscious at this point, Sarah? Yeah. Like, could you? You were. Well, I was heavily, obviously, Boy. sedated, and I just, 
I kept hearing her talking to my sister because obviously my mum had been there through the whole time. Uh, so mm. if anyone doesn't know, my family live in Cornwall. So my mum had been there the whole entire time. My sister had come up and she, I had like things on my neck. I had uh, oxygen. I had things down my throat. And for my sister, it was like a lot. And she was just like really, really upset. And I could hear my mum be like, it's okay, it's okay. Yeah, and I could cool. just hear my mum and I was like, oh no, do wake up, I need to wake up. It's it's so weird, but it... And you physically couldn't in that moment, but you just could, you could hear her voice. Yeah. Because that's that even that, her. you saying that, you know, we hear that in like films and yeah. you hear that on TV, but it's like you're living proof of it that like... You were completely unconscious, non-responsive. Yeah. But you could hear your mum. Yeah. Do you feel like that helped you? Did that give you strength, like, with what yes. you can remember? Massively. Because my mum's been my rock through this the whole entire... She's, like, the one I will all tell everything to, you know? And she was just there by my side. So, like, to have her there was just amazing. And, like, I it was imagine. like, you just want to fight to wake up kind of thing. Even though I had no fight in me because I'd been through so much. Like, if you were to look at my arms... They were all like bruised from cannulas, like blood tests. And I just, I just kept fighting. I was like, I need to wake up. Yeah. And that is just absolutely commendable to you. Like what a tough cookie. Like literally my heart goes out to you so much because like I said at the beginning of this, you know, this show, you are one of the most positive people that I know. There's never any kind of mountain that you're fearful of overcoming. And yeah. I just think that's so commendable to you. And you're an inspiration in yourself. You know, even just telling this story, I'm sure that you've inspired so many people, you know, any Crohn sufferers out there to keep going and keep fighting through it. Because, you know, like you say, you've, you've come from well, what you've explained there is like absolute dire hell, Sarah. Yes. And it was also really serious. Like, you know, you effectively, correct me if I'm wrong, but you could have lost your life. Yeah, an hour or two more, I would have been dead and Do you know I, what I, mean? I always speak to my mum now and she always says like I just I just kept waiting for that call and she kept calling the switchboard because um every time she'd call the switchboard the guy was like well she's still registered in this ward like she's not registered anyone else and she had to say to the like the poor operator if my daughter has died how will I know and she just she just didn't know and this all happened overnight so apart from my auntie I don't think anyone actually knew like none of my other family members knew until the morning what was happening so for her wow. it was really scary like you I know can being, imagine. being so far away from home like going just she just didn't know what to do like yeah I, you know I'm, it must have been awful for her because obviously I was I was on a lot of pain meds at the time so I can't really remember half the time but for her of she course. saw everything and I bet that was real stressful for her. And you're a baby, so, you know, I'm just, yeah, I can only imagine how happy she is to have you here, to have you yeah. still fighting, and how proud of you I know. that she is, completely. And Sarah, you know, going back to when you were diagnosed and everything, like, well, let's say post-operation. So when you came out of hospital, you knew you had Crohn's, you'd had this massive operation, you'd had half your intestine taken out. But again... Crohn's is an invisible disease, so it's not mm. something to the eye that anyone would see. Do you felt, feel that people treated you differently or looked at you differently? Or do you feel like maybe that was something you created, like with an insecurity? Like, how did you feel coming out, knowing what was going on, knowing no one could see it, but yeah. you needed to now kind of get back into the real world? Yeah, well, I mean, it took me a while to get back into the real world. Um, I went back to my mum's to recover um, and because I had so many tubes down me I actually had a, got I caught a chest infection and it took me because basically I was on so wow. much morphine I was I kept thinking that somebody was trying to kill me and put their hands around my neck so it was really unusual really? and I just wouldn't get into my bed like my mum was like stop sleeping on on the armchair like get into bed and I was like no so the first night I got into bed I coughed so much that my scar, who anyone doesn't know, is probably about that big, opened up. And I woke up to all this blood. And I was like, oh, my God, what's happened? Like, it was just, again, and it was Jeez like another thing that was just constant. And like, I actually ended up getting depressed. And I wouldn't leave the house. Like, it, my family and friends were like, come on, let's let's take you out. And I was like, no, I don't want to leave. I just don't want to leave, which is really unlike me. Mm. Um, and eventually, like, I, I built my life back up. But it took me about at least three weeks to be able to stand up by myself because I'd been cut open, you know? No, um, of course. It, it, you know, it wasn't, it was just an awful time in my life. And I think like looking back now, it took me so long to get over that and overcome it. But I mean, I, like I say, I feel very comfortable about it now, but 
don't get me wrong, when I'm on holiday and I'm in a bikini, I see people looking at me um, and it's like, oh, where's that scarf from? And I remember the first time I got in a bikini, me and my friend went swimming in East London somewhere. And this kid went to the mum and, you know, they don't understand, but he was like, oh, look, mum, look at her stomach. So that again set me back and I was just like, oh God. And like, I'm still very conscious about it. Like if I start dating someone or, you know, I'm just like, oh my God, don't look at my scar. It's something that I'm very, very conscious about. And I'm hoping maybe in a couple of years, like it will fade and I won't get used to, like I'll get used to it, but it's taken a long time. I can imagine. And you know, it's not only have you gone through all that you've gone through, Sarah, to get you to this point, but it's like, you're still dealing with the after effects of it. And it's almost like now you're on this journey of real self-love, yeah. you know, loving yourself to a, to an extent to which I just, um, I pray that you get to that, that place because you're such an amazing person. But, you know, where you can look at yourself in that mirror and say, you know what, I fully love who I am, you know, because yeah. I think that you totally deserve that and you deserve that love for yourself and that love from anyone that is in your life. Yeah, I mean, I'm so lucky that I have the friends and the family that I do have been so, so supportive. Like I said, I'm really, really lucky to have a friend that also has the same disease as me. So we can obviously talk about things that, you know, people won't understand. I'm not saying that out of like a bad way, like people do try and understand, but unless you have it yourself, you're just not going to It's very difficult, of course. And that was something I was going to ask you, like, did was there any or are there any kind of support groups? you know, for Crohn's disease or for Crohn's disease sufferers out there, you know, because like you say, it's really difficult for anyone to kind of relate and really resonate and understand what you're going through unless they've got it. You know, everyone can be your support, but no one can really truly get it unless they've got it. So are there any kind of support groups out there for Crohn's disease sufferers? Yeah, I mean, there are there are so many. I am actually part of the Crohn's and Colitis Forum um, on Facebook, the UK one. So, like, there's thousands of members, but it's sometimes, I mean, sometimes I just have to scroll past because they, you know, it's, it gets too much, but sometimes it's really <laughs> nice to have a look and just, like, see what other people are going through and if, like, you know, if I can help them and give them a suggestion or if they can help me if I post something... You know, um, you know, unfortunately, there are posts that are missed and stuff, but there are oh, so many groups out there that you can join. Like, I know my hospital have done a couple of open days. I've been to one of them, um, you know, and I think everybody obviously did all these quizzes in lockdown. Me and my family did a quiz um, hosted by Chris Tarrant because I think one of his family members has um, Crohn's disease. And you'll, you'll also find, like, a lot of celebs actually have it. Like, Sam Fares has it. Um, yeah. Is it Dynamo? the magician uh, yes. he yeah we've heard that well. recently in the in the media haven't we yeah because he also yeah. nearly but died of it yeah he was, yeah and i know that he'd lost a lot of weight and i don't know yeah. anything else but yeah you're right i've seen his story yeah and it's it's really interesting to read other people's stories as well you know because everybody's just so different you know you could have had it like not mildly but obviously you could have like a milder case you could have a really really severe case but if i can try and help anyone like that needs my help or vice versa you know great yeah, no, of course. And I think, you know, even you just coming on here and, you know, being courageous enough to share your story is so inspirational because there are a lot of people out there. And like you said, Sarah, it's not an easy topic to talk about, to talk and for anyone in general to talk about yeah. their bowel movements. It's, yeah. not, you know, it's not, it's, it is uncomfortable. Yeah. So the fact that you've come on here and you've done that, like, I really hope that you're really proud of yourself because I'm proud of you as my friend like do you know what I mean to do it and I just want to read some of the comments um so Sarah I mean Emma has said flaunt it girl you've got this and another Emma has said yes girl you've got this Rich has said very inspiring he did ask um a question actually Rich did and he said does Crohn's disease ever go away which I think you explained but just re-explain it again no, so unfortunately there's no cure for it, Richard. Um, they are working on it, but it's one of those things like, you know, does cancer have a cure? Like they just, they obviously have to keep working on it. And if there is a cure, I'm just, I will spend so much money to find the cure for it. And I hope one day that there will be a cure so people don't have to keep going through pain. No, 100%, so do I. And Sarah, now that you, you know, Crohn's disease has been part of your life for like the last seven years, you know, what would you say to anyone out there that is really finding it difficult if they've maybe just recently been diagnosed with Crohn's or, you know, they're kind of going through what you went through at the early stages of you being diagnosed? How or what would you say to them to keep 
on going and to not give up and to kind of, you know, get to the place where you've got. And I think it's just like anything that, you know, you have to, you have to sit with it for a bit. You have to accept it first of all, because if you don't accept it, then you're, you're, you never will, you know? So you just have to keep yes. fighting. Um, obviously I'm quite, I like to think of myself as quite a strong person anyway, but it took me a good four, four to five years to accept it and, you know, think actually, this is what I have. This is what I need to do. Why am I going to let it define me who I am as a person? And basically just don't give up. You know, it makes you yeah. a stronger person. And what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Yeah, completely. And also, like you say, acceptance is key because unfortunately where we're at in this day and age, there is no cure. So there is, there's no choice but to live with this condition. Yeah. You know, as unfair or as tough or as hard as it may be, yeah. We don't have anything in the UK right now to fix it. So, you know, hearing you say that and, you know, what doesn't kill you, make you makes you stronger, especially in your case and the story you've told us, is, I think, is really, really important, you know. And I think yeah. that it's, um, yeah, it's just really, like, you know, like I'm just thinking and I'm absorbing everything you've said and it's really, uh, like, I'm just thinking, about, like, what would I do if, if I found out I was in this situation, you know, and it's tough. Yeah. It is I mean, really don't hard. get me wrong. I have, I absolutely have my down days, and I think you know everyone who is normal, a normal person. And I'm sure everybody, and especially in lockdown, have been like, "Oh my god, like this is hard to handle." But yeah. you just have to keep fighting. You just have to think. Actually, well, you know, I work full time, and I think, oh, actually, I'm, I am a hard worker. I'm going to leave at half. You know, I'm going to be at the desk at half seven. I'm going to do this, and I know some people can't work because of it, and it's really sad. And a lot of I know a lot of people from reading the forums have fallen out with family members because they don't believe them, which just makes really? me really, really sad. So I'm so lucky and so blessed to have the family and the friends that I do. That they've they've kept me going throughout all of this. You know, no, completely. And you know what has just sprung to my brain? Like once lockdown is done and we're free because I love you so much and I just I found your story even though we've spoken about it I feel like we've never gone this in depth and yeah. there was a moment with like a few like five minutes ago I actually felt really emotional with what you were saying and so I think once lockdown is done we need to do some sort of event like I will call on all my music people let's sing let's do something let's raise some money or even just raise awareness for Crohn's disease like is that something you'd be down for doing yeah 100% right I mean, I let's think, do I it think... Last year, I think we did, uh, me and my friend did a walk for Crohn's and Colitis and we walked 10K, which at the time Amazing. I thought, thought was just like so much. But now that I've started random, I'm like, come on. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like, uh, I know that um, one of my aunties, she used to be the golf, uh, what is it, the captain of the golf club. And um, she, every like charity event they had was all going to like Crohn's and Colitis and stuff. And anything okay. for that, like we, we always try and raise money for it. And like, the, like I say, the lockdown quiz, everyone put a fiver in just yeah. to help you know well let's do something let's call on all of our friends all of our peoples and let's put a massive event on because yeah, yeah if there's anything that i can do to support you and i'm sure yeah. that there's so many people out here listening that can you know relate would want to do the same as well so yeah. i think that's really amazing and i just wanted to touch base with you as well so you said like you went from doing this 10k walk to running that you know is, is exercise something that is that would affect you with Crohn's disease. Like. Massively, like, yeah. I mean, you, uh, two years ago, when I was still, you know, not kind of out of the woods, but like, I wouldn't be able to do exercise. And I'm not really a gym person because I know it sounds really silly, but like, I've been in places before where I've been caught short and it is, it's not a nice thing. And I think, well, exercise can aggravate it. And especially things like running. And I started doing this couch to 5k. And I was like, right, you know, stay close. If what if, if it happens, it happens. It's just one of those things you just deal with it. But I just want, um, you know, I just think you just got to try because the only thing is as well with the meds and everything, you you put on a lot of weight, you can either go one way or the other, you go really, really skinny, and you lose a lot of weight, or you can, with steroids and stuff, you can put on a lot of weight. Of course. And I remember um, going on steroids, and I went on a very, very high dose, and you eat so much more, and you just like, oh my god, how much weight have I put on? And like, I just, I need to be losing it now, and it's just, you know, the, the, you just, it's one of those things that you just have to, again, trial and error, like, you know, I could go for a run one day and I'll be fine. Whereas I can go for a run the other day and it will affect my Crohn's and it's just, what can you do? 
And I suppose it's really important to tune into your body and know yeah. what you can and cannot do. Because I know as human beings, we are, you know, I feel like we always try to do a lot more than, you know, sometimes it's like trying to get a million things done in one day. We're actually, I think lockdown has taught us all to slow down. Massive. And, you know, it's cool. If we get three things done today, we'll get the other four done tomorrow. You know, Absolutely. life doesn't have to be lived in this in, in this rat race so I think like what you're saying is really important for you to really tune into how you're feeling because I'm sure if there's a day when you're feeling really bloated or you're feeling like I can't do this I know we've had conversations and I'm like Sarah forget about it yeah. take the pressure off yourself don't bother exercising today you've got tomorrow or the rest of the week do you know what yeah, I mean so I, I think it's also really important to be kind to yourself yeah and that is sort of know, something I want to quickly touch on as well just um obviously we haven't really gone much onto the fatigue side but yes. I can't even tell you how tired I get and it's not just me I'm sure other people do as well and every like I was reading my letters the other day and my hospital letters and every clinic I say they say Sarah it's been feeling tired and it's just like no matter if I have a 10 hour sleep or a 13 hours sleep I'm still tired like it's just so not, that's a cause so lesson. this is also a cause uh, well an effect of Crohn's disease fatigue yeah and um obviously I suffer with uh, b12 and iron deficiency. deficiency so that doesn't help so once I have like my shots every 12 weeks of them I start to feel a bit better and like I start cleaning at like 9 p.m and I'm like oh I can do this but then five weeks later I'm just like oh my god I'm just so tired and like there are times that you know I come home and I'm just like I'm done I'm just going to bed I just need to lie in bed for a couple of hours I'm and then by nine o'clock yeah. I'll start feeling a bit better but I just feel knackered no like, keep, I hear you just keep going and I mean how does that affect you like work-wise like sometimes you ever feel fatigued with work like are they understanding do they you know say like Sarah take like a five minute break or ten minute break because I think that's really important as well <laughs> You're laughing like that's going to be a no. <laughs> but I think I mean, it's really important with, with, you know, something such as Crohn's disease, which again, and I will say it again, it is an invisible disease. We don't know it's there. So, you know, when you are doing your normal daily routine and if you're running up and down stairs or, you know, if you've got quite a, a job where you're doing a lot, um, you're probably going to get tired throughout the day. Yeah. You know, do you feel that you kind of get support like that from work or do you feel like it could be implemented to help you? I mean, there are a couple of people at work that are close to me and like, you know, very good friends of mine and they understand, but I try not to go too much into it at work. A, because I don't want people to feel sorry for me or look at me differently. So to me, I'm just like a normal person. Like you treat me like Sarah, you know, that, that is just who I am. Um, and you know, there are times that, you know, it is quiet and stuff, but for example, I've just gone back to work. Um, I've been working now for two weeks and it has been so, so busy. Really? And like, I came home on Thursday and I was just like, I can't do this anymore. It's too much. I'm so tired. And I was just crying over nothing. But you just get so tired. But again, you've just got to keep going. Yeah. That's all you can do. Because if you're going to give up, you, you're really just not going to get anywhere in life. You just need to keep going. No, and I really, really commend you, Sarah. And Dia said down here, wow, you're such a strong woman, Sarah. And I think everybody oh, that's tuned in and has been listening to your story would say the same. And just before we go, Sarah, I just want to say thank you so much. But also, are there any words of inspiration from anyone out there that is suffering with Crohn's disease right now? And let's just say that they are really on the edge or they're feeling like giving up. Like, coming from you, what is it that you would say to them to just, you know, help them keep going and fighting that good fight? Again, like I say, this just, just keep going. Like, if you're going to give up, then you're just not going to get anywhere in life. And, you know, I don't mean that to sound nasty, but you just have to keep going because if you don't, then you've given up. But what's the point of giving up? Like, I I'm never, ever going to give up. Like, I am a fighter. I am strong. And this disease does not rule me at all. I rule it. That's amazing. And you know what? Emma's written, Sarah, you're a little warrior. And um, Mark Fitness has said, you'd never know you were ever oh, suffering, right. Sarah. And I think that that is it. We look at you and you literally are just this bright, shining, confident, positive person. And no one would ever know that you have something like this wrong with you, that you have Crohn's disease. And I just think it's commendable for you. It's your, sorry, an admiration. Curse, get your words out. You're an inspiration to so many of us. You know that sometimes we can complain about a hard day at work and, you know, not that you, we have to compare, but do you know what I mean? When I listen to your story and I hear what you've said, it's kind of like, you know what? There is no mountain too high that none of us can't achieve. And I just think that you're such an amazing person. And Emily said, amazing, babe. Dee said, 
you have to keep strong and keep fighting. Like everyone is just giving Thanks, you real guys. positive vibes and I can't thank you enough. And I can't thank you enough for coming on and sharing your truth and sharing your story because I know that you were a bit nervous. But oh, you've done amazing and I think you've really touched a lot of people and I'm just so, so grateful. So thank you so much, Sarah. You're so welcome. And can I just say thank you, thank you to all my friends that have also come and supported me on this because they knew that I was nervous too. Yes, no, so well done, Sarah. And um, just thank you again for tuning in, guys. I'm Kirsty Spence. This is Real Relevant and Right Now. Today's guest is Sarah Harvey. And we'll be back next week with another guest. So I'll speak to you soon. Peace out. Bye. Bye.